welcome back to Real Estate and More Show. Thank you for listening in. Leapfrog. What in the world is leapfrog? And what does it have to do with one's home? Well, the answer to this could be, it might have a whole bunch to do with your home if it has to do with a sewer lateral. Several Bay Area cities require an inspection and proof of the satisfactory condition of the sewer lateral prior to sale of a home. If it needs replacement, it is costly, usually. What if the old clay pipe is cracked and oak tree roots have intruded and blocked the flow just before your new home is about to close escrow? What about high water usage? Today, we have the opportunity to discuss these conditions with Mr. Leapfrog Plumbing himself, Mr. Maurice Williams. Maurice is a good friend and an amazing man who has built his plumbing company into a community asset. We have a great time planned learning how certain plumbing conditions of a home sale might be solved along with the necessity of ensuring the home you live in plumbing wise is froggy good. Let's welcome this gentleman to the show. Welcome Mr. Maurice Williams. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. <laughs> did you grow up in the Bay Area, Maurice? I did. Actually, I was born in, in Oakland and uh, raised in Berkeley uh, at the age of uh, two on until graduation from high school. So, wow. yes. I heard you're quite a gymnast back in the day. Is that oh, true? Oh, gosh. Um, I was very much involved in gymnastics and, and um, at Berkeley High School where I attended. Um, I had a very good mentor, his Don Allen, who had uh, inspired me and and had uh, taken me to a certain level and and provided uh, a scholarship uh, from several universities throughout the country. So yeah, he was he was my inspiration at that point, I and I did, um, yeah, and yeah, I, I I was a social moron after that point. Uh, gymnastics was my life uh, oh. during my high school and collegiate years. So. Yeah. So, uh, do you ever have to use those skills when you work on plumbing systems at all? <laughs> well, I did. When you do crawl unders and you get under sinks and so on, in my younger years, yes, uh, those skills did come in handy, particularly the flexibility part of it. <laughs> I can imagine. Now, you've been a family-owned business since 1993. What made you change from something as fun as gymnastics to something as fun as plumbing? Well, Mike, I, I've been involved in a number of different occupations, and uh, after after I had graduated from from college, I um, I got involved with the city of Vancouver up in Canada. So I was going to grad school there at the time, and uh, since gymnastics was my forte, I uh, started a gymnastics club, and uh, we. Uh, called the Bugs, Burnaby, Burnaby Unified Gymnastics Society. So I did that for a number of years, and I worked for the city of uh, Vancouver as well as a Parks and Recreation Director and uh, in, in comes operations. And so I bounced around quite a bit and did that for maybe eight years or so. And, and then uh, when we moved back to California, it was, um, uh, we found that the type of occupation I had in Canada they didn't really have those opportunities here. Uh, so, speaking with my older brother, he who was a plumber, um, uh, he inspired me and said, hey listen, you should probably start a plumbing business. I'm going, well, what's that? So he encouraged <laughs> me, taught me, and went through the whole spill, and uh, and uh, yes, so I got involved in that and loved it. I loved the hands-on part of, of plumbing and just uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. So, yeah, that was the beginning. So. Well, I see your trucks around the Bay Area all the time. They're always uh, brilliantly painted, and they say leapfrog plumbing all over them, and it has a big phone number. This is old-style, really cool marketing, and I have to applaud you for that. How many of those trucks do you have now? Well, we have nine, or excuse me, uh, 11, 11 trucks. And nine that are fully functional at this point, yeah. Oh, it's so, hard to keep them all going, you mean? Oh, well, uh, you know, it's really hard to find uh, young men these days to to get involved in the trades, you know, in the yeah. So we're still looking and we're still fishing right now. I understand. So, yeah. I understand. A lot of the a lot of the trades are having difficulty with that finding workers that actually want to work and know how to do something. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Kids are pretty much involved in digital components and so on so they they get involved in that and uh, and when it comes to like 
home repairs or you know learning the hands-on type skills they have a very difficult time so uh, so as as a result it's really hard to find people that can uh, uh, get inspired to do those uh, those type of works <laughs> well you're you're an inspirational kind of guy so I, I'm imagining you're gonna have all of those trucks running here before we know it oh, I'm so, hoping. <laughs> so in Oakland um, and Oakland is one of those cities that has the sewer lateral inspection with satisfactory condition mm-hmm. um, inspections correct. to do and your company does these correct correct we do um, actually um, in the Oakland and Berkeley area, we do sub that out, but we work integrally with uh, with two other diff- companies. Mm-hmm. So. so the way it works, folks, is um, in these certain municipalities, that sewer lateral needs to be inspected and come up with a certificate of satisfactory condition in order for the home to sell. And so in real estate, we run across that all of the time. Right. And it's great right. to have uh, a good guy like Maurice to help us out. We call him up and say, hey, we need this, uh, this uh, sewer lateral inspected at this address. And he gets out there with one of his nine trucks and gets it all done and how do is that done how do they do this well well it's it's complicated to explain it but it's uh we normally use what we call the trenchless me- method which is less intrusive uh to any type of landscaping or what have you so um what it does it has a boom in the front which is this giant huge type of uh a bullet type uh of me- uh item and what it does it it breaks out the old pipe generally it's clay uh and and at the same time is pulling new poly pipe right through which is far more flexible it has a a 50-year warranty on it and yeah so we drill two potholes one at the uh the origin point one at the termination point pull it through and there there it goes you know generally it takes about a full day with a crew of four to five wow so We've seen a few of those uh, actually happen, and generally speaking, you when you do an inspection, don't you run a camera through that uh, sewer? We do the um, what we call the local authority, and in Contra Costa County, it would be the Contra Costa County uh, Sanitation District. They'll come in and do a pre-inspection, ensure that the grade is proper uh, before they will even allow us to do a trenchless application. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, they'll do the inspection, we'll do the camera, they'll give us the go, and then we're on our way. Wow. It's happened a few times uh, when we've been ready to get on with our um, sale that uh, the inspection comes back and the sewer lateral is broken. It gets a little crack in in the old clay pipe or wherever, and then roots intrude into the actual pipe. And now you have a blockage and that not only needs to be cleared, but it needs to, um, you know, result in it as well, too. Yeah, yeah. we've um, clay pipe, as you probably know, in older homes, uh, that was the application they used for for sewers, um, sewer laterals. It would be yeah, either clay. Um, there was this other, during the war, World War II, they had this composite type of pipe that was almost like, um, how can you put it? Uh, it's like an, a, an adobe type of, of piping that they used because they didn't want to use the metals because the metals was used primarily for the war. So yeah, that was, uh, that was an application. We find that clay pipes, uh, they're very rigid, so if there's any earth movement, or whatever, it does cause cracks and intrusion of roots and so on, and it can really, really cause havoc. Yeah, well, so. That could be a real problem for us because uh, here we are with 400 shakers a year in the glorious state of California. I mean, and the things move around. They there's certainly do. Foundations <laughs> and labs and this kind of things, and also those clay pipes. So it's great yeah. to know that the trenchless method is used wherever municipalities will allow you to. Exactly. And and go from there. How long is a sewer lateral line? And that's the connection line, right? Right. The sewer lateral can vary depending on the size of the home and the distance between where the municipality has their main line um, and the what we call the service entry of the home. So it can range anywhere from 25 feet to 300 feet. You know? Ah, so, I see. Yeah. Uh, and now you would think with all of the money that we spend on our sewer bills that you know, the, <laughs> the, the municipality would take care of the sewer laterals. But, oh, no. I mean, we some people would like to see that happen, but no, they're notorious for just having the homeowner to be totally responsible for they own that line. 
We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Real Estate Minute with REMAX expert, Michael Hatfield. Michael, what traits should we look for in selecting an agent? Look for a deal maker with a positive attitude who will work tirelessly for you. An agent who is adept in multiple offer situations, drafting contracts, marketing and advertising a client's home, is familiar with multiple cultures, experienced in mortgage financing, inspections, and escrow, is a huge asset to his client. What can you do as a plus for clients? Your agent is your eyes and your ears, one who works behind the scenes on your behalf, a great attitude, working well with others, and keeping clients' priorities number one is a given for us. Call 925-322-7775 now to schedule an appointment or complimentary home analysis. For excellence in real estate, call the Michael Hatfield REMAX team at 925-322-7775 or go to michaelhatfieldhomes.com. Now, back to our show. And they can dictate, the municipality can dictate what you, what you can and can't do but the homeowner owns that line is responsible for the function of that line. For so. its repair, right. absolutely. And it connects to the sewer main, and where is the main normally located in most people's homes? Uh, the main, uh, if you're speaking of the municipality, there is running right down the middle of the street, Yes. okay, in most cases. Um, and it, the depths can be, I mean, we had one that was 24 feet down, um, you know, and we had to put a lot of uh, shoring and so on and even they go down in a hole that deep but yeah it varies considerably i've seen them four feet deep up to as i said 24 feet deep so it all depends and of, yeah. and of course the line is is angled from the home normally For to sure. the main so that uh, gravity helps it helps it move yeah it has to have the proper grade yeah so. absolutely ladies and gentlemen we're we're having a really nice time today with mr maurice williams he's the head frog guy of <laughs> leapfrog plumbing and he's done so for a long time he's a great friend and we're very fortunate to have him here today what do you normally do with water conserving fixtures well the water conserving fixtures as you may be aware in california particularly uh they're very very um i mean in, in ensuring that toilets for instance toilets are 1.28 gallons per flush now before it used to be three to five gallons but that is the uh, requirement that uh, that california has imposed which is a real positive thing and they're far more efficient and a lot of people say well i want to keep my old five gallon toilet but they don't understand that that toilet may not have, uh, even though it has the capacity of water, it may not have the function that's required in order to evacuate the waste and so on. That's when the uh, law came in. I guess it was like 2017, and that's when they start saying, okay, before you can sell your home, the homeowner has to attest that either the fixtures are water conserving right. or they're not. Right, and there that is point, a compliance somebody, that they have yeah. to have that um, uh, the, not only the uh, the toilets, but as you mentioned, the fixtures, the faucets have to have a, a, a maximum GPM or gallons per minute um, extrusion. The um, let's see, there'll be toilets and faucets and yeah, shower fixtures too. I mean, it was stated earlier um, in the I guess the early two thousands that they had these water conservative shower heads that would only admit um, two gallons per minute, as I recall. But what that did is it caused a problem, with, particularly with women with long hair and with, <laughs> with uh, you know, with soap in their hair. They were staying in the water, excuse me, staying in the shower much longer than they, sh they needed to. Well, they still and do. So, <laughs> but, but now they've upped the capacity and, and uh, they're far more efficient at admitting that four gallons, excuse me, three gallons per minute. and. And, and it works well now. So they, they pretty well balanced it out, uh, realizing that water conservation is not just um, dependent on, on the, the GPM, but depends on how long the people were staying in the showers too. So they took all of that in consideration, so. You know, a good friend of mine told me one time, he says, uh, as we gain vintage, um, our ladies take longer in the bathroom. And oh, I said, you. I can blame water conserving <laughs> fixtures, I think, for that. Can I not? You absolutely can, for sure. And that's a fact. You um, know. <laughs> well, I notice uh, LeapFrog is 24-hour service. Who answers? No, if we call at 2 o'clock in the morning, are we going to get Maurice Williams? 
Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you call at two o'clock in the morning, you will get a recording, and um, yeah, and we will. If, depending on the uh, the nature of, of the emergency, and we'll either try to dispatch a person within a couple of hours, or we'll wait till the next morning and then get someone out and and to contact the uh, the individual making the, the emergency call. So, mm. so if we if we as a real estate team sell a um, uh, like a apartment building, now do you actually do sewer laterals on those, and you do inspections on a building like that? Um, for in plumbing? some cases, yeah, it depends on. I mean, if it's like the Keys, for instance, which is a huge um, uh, apartment complex in Walnut Creek. Um, in most cases, we stay away from those. Either that, or we'll hook up with a different, uh, another plumbing company. Because the uh, the na- the nature of that is just so involved uh, that we, as a small company, could not handle that type of uh, uh, a situation. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll uh, partner up with different companies in order to take care of the problem that they need to have taken care of. So yeah. you know, one day my dad said to me, he says, "Son." Uh, in some countries, they tell how wealthy you are by the number of dogs that you have to uh, keep around you and keep you warm. I think here in the Bay Area, by the number of trucks that you have in your company, is going to determine how large of a business you are. That's the nine true. trucks, you're not all that small, yeah. Mr. Williams. Well, I kind of consider myself small. I like to have that mentality of being a small, you know, uh, single homeowner owner, you know, so yeah. Um, when I say large, I'm thinking of companies such as Rotor Rooter, you know, where they have a, a umpteen number of, of trucks in different municipalities, and it's a franchise. We're just family owned, and we're just like homegrown. Yeah, so. <laughs> I hear you. Well, you know, just this morning we um, we took a walkthrough of a home that we just put into contract, mm-hmm. and the lady said, she says, you know, we really appreciate the fact that you always have our back in these deals Mm -hmm. and you've done it you've you're you know if we're not there we know that you're watching out for us and i would say that in a business such as yours a family-owned business since 1993 Mm -hmm. you have all of these five-star reviews for your company i think it's much the same with you i would much rather hire you to do my job than to have a big national company come in and to do it but you're not that small uh marie and I think that uh, you can have resources behind you to where you can get the job done and do a great job. And I know, for one, uh, I, I trust you. So uh, Okay, well, I really appreciate that. Mike. We're, we're, I, I do sense that we're small, but we think big, and we try to act big in, in order to take care of problems that, uh, that may arise with uh, you know, various customers and so on. But we, you know, it's, it's really... It's really um, different way we we think too i I found though over the years and in having this company we've we've developed friendships with many of our customers and it's not just a a contractual type of agreement that we work with but we i look forward to meeting them and seeing them and working with them and the sincerity of wanting to help them that's what's really key and i think that's why we've had uh, a fair amount of success you know so uh, I would say you, you do great. Yeah, yeah. Now let's talk about real estate. Somebody mm-hmm. wants to sell their home. Mm-hmm. Now it's important before you actually get to the home inspection, because those fellas don't really do the plumbing inspections the way your company would, mm-hmm. it, it could be useful to have you come through do an inspection of mm-hmm. the plumbing ahead of time before we bring in a home inspector that says, oh, well, that looks like it's an older pipe <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind yeah. of a thing. But would it be not be an advantage to a homeowner um, if they're looking to sell their home to bring, oh, well, yes, to bring I, you in? <clears throat> I think, and, and I'm not downplaying any of these home inspection companies, but oftentimes you'll find that the individuals they send out are not licensed or really not that skilled. This is what we found. And I mean, there may be some out there that are, but usually you want to get a real certified plumber to to research and investigate to see if there are any leaks or if there's any problems with their, um, their, their fixtures, their plumbing fixtures throughout the house. And um, I, I think that's important. And, and the cost savings in the long run uh, would be to their advantage. Mm. the customer's advantage. I I would most certainly think so. Recently, we sold a home in Hayward. Mm -hmm. And 
during the process of selling the home, another agent accessed the home to show to her clients. Uh, we were the listing side. Mm -hmm. And she brought through her clients, they used the toilet and the toilet flapper continued in the up position and the water ran and ran and ran and ran and right. subsequently she ended up with a thousand dollar bill for that which i think was mitigated because of the circumstances but you know you right. have to plead your case right. to the municipality in order to get some kind of credit for it but it would have been totally avoided if there would have been an inspection of the property Absolutely. and really took a look at those those toilets because you know toilet are hanging open and just putting water and water and water into right. um, the sewage system is just not a real great way and to we, go. We see that often where the chain on the flapper gets hung up and it continually allows the water to flow from the tank to the bowl. And oftentimes if there's a blockage, I mean, I've seen many, many times cases where <clears throat> a flapper was defective. The water kept running. There was a blockage. The water spills onto the floor, particularly if there's a wooden floor. And then the home homeowner is left with this warped wooden floor. So subsequently, they end up with a you know thousands of dollars worth of damage that they need to deal with. So it's important to have an inspection done on a regular basis, regardless of a sale or not. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure that your your plumbing fixtures are working properly. So. Yeah, you, you, you definitely want to take care of it before you actually develop a big problem sure. and waste yeah. a bunch of water or cause yeah. a lot of headaches. And, yeah. you know, when we get into a um, deal to sell a home, we represent the buyer or the seller, mm -hmm. we, we want things to go smooth as possible. So I'm going to keep this in mind to have you come into a, uh, an inspection. It, it can't cost that much to, I don't think, <laughs> to come in and to, um, to take a look at all of the plumbing and uh, uh, give us yeah. some kind of an idea if anything needs to be upgraded or right. or whatever. You yeah. know, another question is some people try to repair their own plumbing. What do mm -hmm. you think about that? Well, I I think that it, I think that's a good thing. If people are aware that they have a problem, they have to understand what their limits are as far as being skilled in dealing with that problem. Um, if you recognize that some things may be over your head. I would suggest that they call a plumber to come in and do the inspection, and oftentimes there's no cost in doing that. We can give them an idea of what the extent of their problem is and and the cost that would be involved, and then they can make the uh, the decision. Yeah, you know? I, so. I can see you're into relationship building. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, because that's you, what it's about. Yeah, no, you know, you mm -hmm. might come in and you might do something nice for a homeowner, and when they do have a problem, they say, well, you know, I'm comfortable with Mr. Williams, and I want to call the head frog, which is always a really great name because you yeah. never forget it. Leap Frog right. Plumbing, you just never forget that name. But they'll call you then when they need service, and you know that might be at the time that you can best help them and and do good. Right, you're and, absolutely right there. But now let's go ahead. Go ahead. So, I'm sorry, sir. No, we try to establish that type of relationship with our customers too. Oftentimes, you know, we'll walk away with uh, not even having a contract, and that's not what's important. What's important is that they'll remember us, and if something does arise in the future, that we'll be available to help them. And yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know if you call that intentional marketing, but it it, it happens. It know? does, yeah. So. One, a couple of other questions. Do you install the earthquake shutoff valves we on the do. gas lines? We do. So you do that, <laughs> which is a requirement for sale in a lot of different homes nowadays? Absolutely. The, that is a requirement in a lot of different municipalities, too. We're also vendors for PG&E, and we have been for the last 12 years or so. So we're very familiar with gas as, as well as water and sewer and so on. Um, and it is a requirement on every job that we do for PG&E directly, uh, having to do with their meter and their gas line, we will install as required a seismic valve. I so. see. Now, what about water heaters? I know as part of the sale requirements, all water heaters, if they're standard tank water heaters, have to be strapped for issues that might happen with an earthquake. Right, yeah, and yeah. that's pretty standard. Um, I think a lot of people may not be aware of the fact that in California, I mean, let's, let's back up a little bit. Water heaters are probably the most neglected plumbing appliance in any given home. People take hot water for granted. Um, so when, and it doesn't, they don't want to re remediate a problem until it's obvious that, that there is a problem. So if there's leakage or whatever, um, then they, they jump on it. But water heaters, and we put out uh, advertisements to our customers 
that water heaters are just like changing oil in a car. It has to be flush regularly. Every three years, you should have your water heater inspected to ensure that it's not building up calcium and particulates inside. Because they do uh, deteriorate from inside out, and you don't know it until a leak occurs, you know, mm. so. One uh, last question, are you finding a lot of people going to the tankless water heater? We do, I think in the last 15 years in the plumbing industry, that that is probably the most exciting thing that's happened. Um, we find that tankless water heaters are far more efficient. Uh, they have like a, a, a incredible uh, warranty as 15 years compared to a standard water heater, which is generally six years. And then, um, yeah, and that gives you not instant hot water, but endless hot water. They do have internal pumps, which will hasten the delivery of hot water to any given uh, plumbing appliance. Uh, they're, they're just wonderful. But when you consider the warranty, you consider the efficiency, in the long run, it does pay. All good information this yeah. morning. I would like to thank you for taking the time to come on the show to enlighten our listeners and as to uh, how it plumbing gets into the home sale and the importance of dealing with it. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed our show, Leapfrog and Your Plumbing. They hop to it for you. Should you have any plumbing issue, you can contact us at 925-322-7775. We'll connect you with Leapfrog Plumbing. Thanks for being on the well, show, Mr. You, Williams. Mike. It's been a pleasure. It's good seeing you. You okay. bet. Same here. <laughs> You've been listening to a Real Estate and More show. I'm your host, Michael Hatfield. Important topics like Bay Area real estate and interesting people like the head frog himself this morning. Listen to archive real estate and more shows at michaelhatfieldhomes.com slash radio. Or you can listen on the podcast. Our show, the Real Estate and More show, is on most major directories. I'm Michael Hatfield. I hope you'll tune in next week. And in the meantime, have a blessed week. The views and opinions expressed are based on current economic and market conditions and are subject to change. Information on the show provided for illustrator purposes only and does not constitute professional or legal advice. Information from sources deemed reliable, but accuracy and completeness not guaranteed. Michael Hatfield and the Michael Hatfield Remax team have no liability for information discussed on the show. Consult with qualified professionals prior to taking action. We at the Michael Hatfield Remax team enjoy representing our valued clients. If you or someone you know is interested in buying or selling and wishes to schedule a complimentary appointment with the Michael Hatfield Remax team, call us at 925-322-7775. That's 925-322-7775. Or go to our website, michaelhatfieldhomes.com. I'm Michael Hatfield. Thank you for listening today. Join us next Saturday for the next Real Estate and More, when we again sharpen our focus on how's the market. Join us next Saturday and have a wonderful week. Best wishes and blessings to you. DRE 0149